With at least three months of winter ahead of us, everyone in the fire service gears up for working in colder weather and dealing with seasonal emergencies. Well, one kind of winter emergency is definitely ice rescue. There are lakes and ponds that always freeze over or partially freeze in communities, both large and small. And every year, lots of people, especially kids, become potential hypothermia and drowning victims by playing on these frozen lakes. That's right, Vicki. Our incidents this month occurred during winter time, and we're looking at the topic of ice rescue now so that you can prepare for this winter's possible rescue scenarios, hopefully before one would occur within your community. For those of you in warmer climates where ice is not a possibility, these mu incidents this month and the hot topics that we're going to present also apply to typical warm water rescue situations and any near-drowning type incident. Let's take a look at this month's program objectives. After watching this month's programs, you'll be able to accomplish the following. One, list and describe the types of manufactured and homemade equipment considered necessary during an ice rescue. And second, describe and demonstrate two in-water survival techniques for keeping warm when immersed in icy water. Third, list the revisions to the American Heart Association CPR and their emergency cardiac care guidelines. And then fourth, explain the importance of interagency coordination at an incident such as this that requires specialized equipment. So with those objectives in mind, let's get started with our first American Heat incident. Last February, Anthony Bertino was walking his dog around a frozen lake in Washington Township, New Jersey. He noticed that three children had fallen through the ice and were struggling in the cold water. Well, he immediately went to their aid, but the ice would not hold him either, so he too was a victim very soon. One of the children was able to extricate himself from the icy water and call for help. The rescue that followed taught responders many valuable lessons. Last February, as her Phil Volunteer Fire Company crews were returning home from a call, they heard the dispatch of people in the water. The location was a lake nearby, so even though their fire company is not responsible for any type of rescue operations, and they aren't trained in specialized rescue, they responded to the scene. Upon arrival, there were three people visible in the water, but responders were uncertain if only three victims were involved. Initially, reports told responding agencies that possibly four victims were involved. Fire company crews immediately began throwing ropes and rope bags out to the victims, but to no avail. The victims were just too far from the shoreline. As first in companies were attempting to reach the victims from the shore, one fire company member arrived in his personal vehicle. Seeing where the victims were, someone informed him that there was a, a canoe down the street, so he took his personal vehicle and went and retrieved the canoe while they were attempting the rope bag uh, rescue, so to speak. used basically that type of um, boat is unstable in that type of situation it's subject to tipping things like that um, not being trained in ice rescue and not having that responsibility it really didn't come into play or that I did not didn't come into play at the time uh, it was just a, a knee-jerk so to speak reaction trying to get to the victims although the ice was thin in areas it still inhibited rescuers from reaching the victims quickly Responders in the canoe used pike poles, halogen bars, and other equipment from their apparatus to break through the ice and gain access to the victims in the water. Firefighter Bill Webb arrived on scene with the second in engine, and after setting up a landing zone for the medical helicopter, he escorted the pilots to where rescue operations were taking place. At that time, we were basically doing everything we could, trying to get things set up with, with the arriving apparatus and uh, people from the surrounding communities as they arrived. Um, generally, we were trying to uh, get everything set up and get it in an orderly fashion because at, at that time it was pretty chaotic and everybody was running around. Uh, everybody was a little excited at the, at the time. 
As fire company crews continued to make their way through the icy water, crews from the Washington Township Rescue Association were arriving on scene. These crews train for ice rescue and have the specialized equipment necessary to perform these types of rescues. We deployed their boat into the water and the, I believe the next one after that was Pittman Fire and Rescue with their boat. Uh, they we deployed their boat at that time. We had the canoe and the two rescue boats in the water. Uh, the two rescue boats did go after the two girls and successfully, successfully pulled them from the water. But just as the two girls were rescued, responders noticed that Mr. Bertino, the passerby who had tried to help the two girls, had gone under the ice. down they could not see him uh, chopping through the ice was, was a, you know, like I said a big obstacle um, they were using pipe poles and everything they could to try and find him to try and locate him in the water and uh, main obstacle was just basically not being able to see him and not knowing exactly where he had gone down or where he might be at the time as rescuers fought frantically to locate Mr. Bertino his faithful dog stayed on the ice circling and sniffing the area where Mr. Bertino had gone under at the time we probably didn't realize it and didn't really think much about it but once we did think about it and we said you know the dog stayed in the one spot for quite a, you know for a couple minutes and then we uh, the people in the boats took a look right where, about where the dog was and did find Mr. Bertino. The dog had been signaling where to find his master. Although only immersed for three to five minutes Mr. Bertino was clinically dead on the scene but resuscitation efforts on shore were successful. He spent several weeks in the hospital, but did make a full recovery and is alive and well today. This experience taught responders many lessons. The main rescue challenge was just basically uh, the members of the fire company not having the training. Um, that was a big obstacle we had to get over and we basically had a makeshift operation and did what we could. And with what resources we had, and. That was, a, that was a big obstacle at the time. Another big obstacle was the ice um, and the apparatus trying to get into location, um, it did become a, almost like a parking lot, the apparatus trying to get on location. What did help us tremendously was the experience with incident command and trying to organize such a large scale operation. It basically was an on the job training. It's very important to realize in these special situations that you not only receive the special training for these types of rescues and incidents, but that you also have a uh, firm understanding of the incident command system and its operations and its procedures. Because coordination of the effort is paramount. If it doesn't start off on a good foot, it's never going to finish, you know, finish on a good foot. Incredible video. Our next incident takes us to Omaha, Nebraska, where two children were trying to cross a frozen lake on their bicycles. They fell through the ice and they became trapped. Like our first incident, an adult bystander attempted to rescue them, but he too fell victim to the ice. Rescuers in Omaha spent nearly an hour and a half conducting rescue operations, but only one victim survived. We're now going to hear the details of their efforts. Omaha, Nebraska Fire Department Battalion Chief Steve Fryer arrived on scene within three minutes of the initial dispatch. After setting up command, he approached the edge of the ice and noticed one victim splashing frantically in the water. Chief Fryer continued out toward the edge and noticed a police officer standing there holding a rope. He told the police officer to tie the rope to the back of his belt and to stay back as far as he could and to hold on tight. I uh, got down on my stomach and uh, proceeded to crawl out to the edge of the edge of the hole. Uh, as I just got to that edge of the hole, I noticed uh, uh, an air bubble surface, a large air bubble. I assumed that the victim had just uh, went under. Uh, so, I, and in, in that instant, uh, the ice gave way under me, and I went went into the water. Uh, when I resurfaced, came up. Uh, uh, I said, well, I just will try to get a hold of him if I could. So I reached down and tried to grab an arm, a leg, a shirt, or anything I could. Uh, I couldn't, couldn't feel anything, and I felt rather confident because uh, I knew that the police officer had a hold of that rope. But when he looked back, he saw that the police officer had fallen through the ice as well. As a second officer approached them and attempted to help, he too fell through. We talked to each other. We calmed each other down. Uh, 
we weren't in the situation as, as that one of the victim, the adult victim was in, where he didn't have any resources, he didn't have anybody backing him up, he didn't have anybody to talk to. Uh, we did uh, calmed each other down, talked about it. At that point, fire department crews initiated attempts to rescue these officers. As they proceeded onto the ice, they put on life jackets and took a 16-foot ladder and life buoy with them. When we got on the ice, we realized that it was a dangerous situation and the, in certain spots the ice was giving way. What I decided then at that time was uh, to see if we could get ourselves out because it was very dangerous. Uh, the ice was very thin. So I proceeded to break out the ice with my forearms and my fist. Then I broke ice until I got to solid ice. Uh, let myself kind of float up and then uh, pulled myself onto the ice. Once out of the water and onto the ice, Battalion Chief Fryer, with the assistance of some other firefighters, pulled one of the victims, a 12-year-old boy, out of the water. Both were taken to shore and treated. Once they came over to us, we immediately uh, took off as much wet clothing as possible, put them in our rescue squad and called for a second squad to uh, transport these people as we would be the uh, triage squad because we were informed that there were at least two more victims under the ice. We hooked uh, Chief Fryer up to the heart monitor, uh, knowing what we know about hypothermic cases, uh, it was a prime concern of ours. We monitored his heart and uh, monitored all his vitals as well as the little boy's vitals. And uh, we began transport immediately uh, as we were warming them en route. In the meantime, Lewis Township had arrived with additional scuba divers and a couple of boats. They proceeded to launch their uh, watercraft into the, in, on to the ice. Uh, consequently, they got out to our position. I, at that time, got into one of the boats, and the initial phase of the rescue, looking for the two individuals that were on the ice, began. I hurried up and I addressed two of my divers to go out on the, on the ice. Uh, we tied a lifeline to them divers, and they proceeded on out. Um, they did get in the water, make initial searches uh, above the water. Uh, they didn't do any deep diving at that time until the Lewis Township water rescue team was there to assist. Um, we do keep one diver in the water and a guy on top of the ice for, in case something happens to the diver, he can go in after him. They both have a, a lifeline on them. As rescue efforts continued on the ice, crews on shore prepared to deal with and treat the victims once they were removed from the water, gathering necessary supplies and determining individual roles in the EMS operation. After that was just a waiting game, we waited till they got the people out of the water. It's very dark underneath the water. You, you can see a minimum uh, of about six inches is all you can see. You're going mainly by feel, uh, and, the, and like I say, at that time, they did feel what they suspected was a body and, and pulled it out. The first victim they retrieved was the 33-year-old man who had fallen through the ice while attempting to save the two children. He was very blue, he wasn't breathing, and he was extremely wet and cold with fixed and dilated pupils. As rescuers brought him into shore, they began CPR and continued until he was safely on shore. He was brought into shore, we immediately put him on a backboard and a stretcher and intubated him and prepared him for transport with the helicopter to the hospital. Paramedics hooked the man up to a heart monitor in flight to the hospital, but resuscitation efforts were not successful. Meanwhile, crews at the lake were frantically trying to find the final victim, a young boy. When he was pulled from the water, people on shore could not hide their emotions. Save the kid. <laughs> Come on, Pete. Go, man. Go. Go. Go, Pete. Go! I was fortunate enough to grab him and pull him into the boat. Once we, I got him into the boat, he, he was very hypothermic. There was no sign of uh, him breathing. I could not get a pulse on him. I initiated mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation in the process. Uh, massive effort was in, ensued to get us to, the sh to shore with the child. Consequently, we did make it to the shore. At that time, I relinquished care of the child to the EMS people that were on shore. Well, the only real problem I had was when I went to innovate the 12-year-old. The uh, we were outside so long, 
the, all, all the intubation tubes were really cold and they were real stiff. I had a real hard time getting it to bend up into the, into the trachea. It would help if you kept it warm. We usually have to don't have to deal with that because we're in a warm squad or in a warm house. The biggest, the biggest thing I'd, I'd like to change would have been uh, probably the handling when we took them out of the water. Uh, everybody's really concerned with trying to get them into the helicopter and, and onto the shore as fast as they can and I think it's more important to be more gentle and, and they've been under the ice for a long time. One more minute's not going to make a lot of difference. It would be better to handle them gently, get them onto the shore as gentle as you can rather than uh, real, real rough and just get them there as fast as you can. I would say if, if you have access to uh, any kind of technology, any kind of training that would enhance your efforts as you try and save someone on thin ice or in water or both, we need to take advantage of those. It's, uh, this business is like insurance, you never know when you're going to use it, but when you do have to use it, you want to make sure you have enough. This was my first, uh, say, drowning in cold weather and, and involving ice. Uh, I was never aware of how dangerous or unstable a condition this is. Uh, I think I would be more cautious uh, going out on the ice and be less hesitant to rush out there because as a professional, uh, you're not of any help to, to the people that are out there unless you know for, that, that you are secure and have the confidence to go out there. And you're of no help to someone else if your life, if you uh, endanger yours on the way out there. Well, Vicki, that's the key right there as right. far as lessons learned for both of the incidents. You're no help to anyone if you, the rescuer, are jeopardized. Let's go over a couple of lessons learned that the responders in both of these incidents would like to pass along. First of all, they both talked about the uh, value of training, conducting specialized training here in ice rescue with mutual aid departments. You saw how in both incidents it was quite a draw of resources from the community, let alone. Secondly, they both recommended in incidents work within the incident command system. And that's a system that needs to be utilized particularly when emotions are so high. And that would help for personal accountability and tracking of rescuers so they themselves don't put themselves in jeopardy. Now another recommendation that came out of both of the uh, incidents here was the EMS people telling us to handle the victims gently. And it is true that after they have been exposed to the ice and the cold water, they, they are in a more fragile situation. So this is not the time to throw them about like a smokehouse mannequin. This is a time to treat them gently and professionally. You heard the one EMS provider in Omaha talk about the intubation tubes, keeping the intubation tubes warm. How about all of your EMS equipment? If you open the back doors of your ambulance in a winter rescue and lay the EMS equipment out, your stretcher, your gurney, your oxygen, you're now giving them cold oxygen, let alone cold intubation tubes. So let's keep all of our EMS equipment staged in a warm and usable, ready condition. Also, another lesson learned is having knowledge of the equipment, and by that we mean the resources of both uh, hardware and people that are available. If you realize your department is not able to handle an ice rescue situation, we have multiple victims and we, we have a major problem here, that's the time to have the resource list to draw upon the specialized teams and or resources that are available to assist you. Also, a lesson learned that's very important for each and every one of us, from chief officers down to frontline responders. Be cautious on the ice and respect the ice for what it does to threaten your personal safety. And again, Vicki, the bottom line, we are not any good to anyone as a rescuer if we ourselves have become a, a victim. And you saw that in both incidents, the police and, and the fire putting themselves at risk by going in the water to become part of the problem in some cases. It's such an emotional time though, especially for, for those firefighters who may have been parents themselves exactly. to see children in that. And, and how about that line, training is a lot like insurance, you don't know when you're going to need it, but when you need it, be sure and have enough under your belt. Excellent.